All right, Mr. Kim, are you available online, sir? Yes, sir, I'm online. Oh, I'll say what else, okay. Grace, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Good evening, we'd like to call to order the May 18th, 2022 mm -hmm. legislative meeting for the Woodland Hills School District. Roll call, please. Ms. Lawson? Ms. Uh, she's in there as an attendee, but she has not accepted the panelist thing. Oh, she's here. She was. She, she she'll be here in a minute. Go oh, ahead. Okay. Okay. I, I'm I'm marking her here. Miss Curry here. Miss Scott here. Miss Reed here. Mister Scott here. Miss Creech. Miss Clan. Mister Clanagan Bay here. Dr. McMillan? Here. Mr. Belmont? Here. Please rise for the flag salute and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We uh, lost an 11 year old student. Two days ago, Billy Hornack bowed your heads in silence for Joe and his family. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there an acceptance of the April agenda minutes? A motion to so accept. Moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Curry, second by Ms. Scott. Is there any questions? <laughs> Call for the vote. It's open. Mr. Scott. Yes. Dr. McMillan? Yes. Ms. Lawson, are you connected yet? Okay. Motion carries. Ms. Lawson will be joining us shortly. It looks like Ms. Creech might be online now, too. Did we note her? Ms. Creech, are you on? Okay, let's move forward with the next uh, 1.5, acceptance of the April legislative <coughs> meeting minutes. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Ms. Scott. Second. Second by Ms. Curry. Any questions? Roll call, please. Dr. McMillan? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Lawson? Yes. Thank you. Okay, motion carries. Uh, we held an executive session prior to the meeting to discuss personnel issues. Uh, are there any announcements? I have an announcement. Ms. Scott. Um, tonight is the certificate ceremony for our graduating Forbes Road seniors. I want to just extend my sincere congratulations to all of them. I know they worked really hard. I apologize for not being able to be in two places at once as I serve on that board as well, but we're really proud of those scholars. And I know if you follow the district social media, you've seen a handful of them recently highlighted and one of them was here just last week. So congratulations, round of applause for all your hard work. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Scott, and thank you for being our liaison. 
to that uh, school. Uh, I have one announcement. Uh, Dee Scales, uh, one of our paras, uh, I think as some of you know, she was named the PSEA, Para of the Year for the state. And Ms. Scales then went to New Orleans to participate in the national convention and was nominated for the uh, national ambassadorship for that position. Um, came up short there, but uh, when I spoke to her, that did not dampen her enthusiasm nor her dedication to our scholars here. So thank you, Ms. Scales, and congratulations. Any other announcements? Uh, yes, I have seven, so uh, I'll try to be quick. Uh, first, high school graduation is next Friday, May 27th. Congratulations in advance to all our outgoing seniors. I know you will do great and whatever endeavor you choose, we will make the call closer to that date, whether it be outdoor or indoor ceremony. Uh, second, congratulations to Ms. Dawn Golden, Director of Pupil Personnel. She won the Educator of the Year Award presented by Mad Dads at their 16th annual anniversary dinner, which was held Sunday, May 15th at the Lamont Restaurant. The committee chose worthy educators from various districts. We're proud to congratulate uh, our very own Ms. Golden for receiving this award. I don't know if she's online tonight, but Ms. Golden. Uh, reminder that the Kennywood tickets are on sale. You can purchase tickets online. The online purchase link is located on the website. Please be reminded that your tickets will only be valid now through June 30th. Uh, four, reminder that the Woodland Hill School District Community Day will be held on Saturday, August 20th at Dixon Preparatory STEAM Academy. Providers may register on Sign Up Genius. The link is located on our website. For more information, please contact Ms. Hawthorne at extension 0183. Number five, please consider volunteering this Saturday for the annual senior sign distribution. There are about 240 signs that need delivered and more volunteers are needed. If you are interested, please contact Amber Mesco at Dixon Preparatory. Uh, number six, the Early Bird Child Care is hiring experienced child care providers for the 22-23 school year. Early Bird Child Care offers before and after school care to our students and is located at Edgewood, Edgewood Elementary and Turtle Creek Elementary. Interested candidates should contact Ms. Marlo Elam at 412-315-5679. And I'm sure John Kim has that number scrolling on the bottom of the screen, right, John? <laughs> uh, I'm going to post all these to the district website tomorrow on the superintendent's report. So anyone that needs to refer to some of this information um, and you're not writing it down as we're going through it, you, it will be on the uh, website tomorrow. Last but not least, we want to give a huge thank you to the Woodland Hills Hugs Foundation for bringing the Harlem Wizards to our community, this event was a major success sponsored by the foundation for the district. There were over 600 tickets sold and everyone had a great time. Thank you to the hugs for consistently bringing the community together. That's all for my announcements. Again, they'll be uh, posted on the superintendent's report tomorrow. Okay, thank you, Dr. Castagna. Moving on to presentations. Ms. Hawthorne, yes. who do we have tonight? We have, uh, hold on, I, I know your name, one minute. Miss Lauren Palamara and Abigail Wittich. <laughs> Can everybody hear us? Are we out there in uh, the land? Oh, you got those. There we go. Okay. Hey. All right. Well, thank you so much to all of the board members here tonight, people who are here uh, looking on. And we're so excited to share with you, myself and Abby, tonight the good work happening with climate action in the school district and shed light on the bright future that we all share together at Woodland Hills. So my name is Lauren Palomera, and I'm a Pennsylvania certified teacher. And after eight years of service in the classroom, I joined Communitopia, which is the organization that I work for in March of 2020, as the youth educator. Communitopia's mission is to provide transformative climate change education that develops today's climate leaders. Is it okay if I take my mask off? 
that develops today's climate leaders and advances equitable solutions. It's it, Mr. Wolf. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem at all. So um, yes, I'm Lauren Palmera. I work for Communitopia, and um, I was elated to find out that I would be partnering with Woodland Hills School District in my role as youth educator at Communitopia. Um, I chair the Student Advocacy Committee of the Woodland Hills Climate Change Committee, and I co-facilitate the Climate Action Team at the high school. Furthermore, I am a resident of the district. I live in Churchill, and I passionately believe that Woodland Hills is one of the best kept secrets in public education in the region. And I am elated to be here to, with you today as a neighbor, as an educator, a partner, and a champion of the work in this district. So now I'm going to introduce my partner in climate action tonight. Hello. Um, my name is Abby Whippich, and I am a 10th grader at the Woodland Hills High School. Um, Woodland Hills has provided me with many opportunities to get involved with climate action that um, I'm, very, I'm very passionate about. And I also suffer from asthma, and it's likely exacerbated by the poor air quality in our region. Um, I'm also a member of the Green Team and, cli and the Climate Action Team to fight for climate just justice for my cl classmates and I, and I'm excited to present to you tonight. So I also want to specifically give a shout out to the students who whose voices we are also representing tonight who aren't able to be here to present with us. And they really are the heart of this work at the district. And we're going to show you tons of examples tonight. But I want to make sure that their names are recognized um, as being channeled through our presentation. So Abby? Um, first, we want to say thank you for giving us time on your busy agenda tonight. And we have a 10-minute presentation that we are going to share that will cover the history and background of climate action at Woodland Hills, a showcase of the actions we've taken in the past two years. And finally, we want, you, we want to know from you how we can continue to collaborate moving forward. So I joined Communitopia in March of 2020, but the work of climate action has been happening since 2018. And I'm going to walk you through the history of climate action in the district and where we're headed. So back in 2018, this is one of my favorite slides to share, um, students in Margot Everhart's eighth grade class participated in a climate change workshop with Communitopia. The workshop created a personal connection between the students and climate change, drawing attention to how students' experiences with asthma connect to environmental racism and chronic poor air quality, which plagues southwest Pennsylvania. The eighth grade students, and there's a, a video I can't show because this is a PDF format, but that's Leviticus McGraw-Sapp in eighth grade. He's now an 11th grader. Um, he and his classmates wrote testimony and spoke before the same school board to voice their concerns and call on the board to take action through the passage of a climate change resolution. Upon listening to so many students present about their concerns, the board voted unanimously to pass this res resolution, making history, and still history to this day, as being the first school board in Pennsylvania to pass a climate change resolution. The resolution, the resolution names climate change as a children's issue, one that disproportionately impacts children of color in low-income communities. The resolving section clearly outlines action steps for the district, including providing comprehensive, development, developmentally appropriate K-12 climate literacy curriculum and learning opportunities, centering climate-friendly decision-making and policy as it relates to buildings, grounds, transportation, and food service, and creating opportunities for students to lead and advocate for climate action within the district, as well as local, state, and federal jurisdictions. Since 
since the passing of the resolution, the Climate Change Committee has been busy at work, meeting every month and oftentimes more than once a month. And these meetings are attended by school administrators who champion this work, such as Mr. Finney and Mr. Wilson, current and former students. There's alumni who come to the meetings every month, uh, teacher liaisons from each building who are engaged in this work, local elected officials, community partners, news media uh, to hear all about the work happening, and partners that are eager to work with the school district. They just show up to our meeting because they want to know what's happening. We have well-established teams who are passionate about this district's, district's success and leadership on this important issue. We welcome any of you to join us to see our work in action at our next meeting. Now we would like to show you what resolution committee work looks like in action. So in the summer of 2021, a core team of members of the committee met to draft the District Climate Action Plan, and I have a copy of it here tonight if you would like to uh, take a peek. And this plan is a roadmap for climate action and climate justice for the children of this school district and the families of this school district. Abby is now going to give a brief overview of what the plan looks like. There are three major goal areas for the climate plan. The first goal is emissions. We will reduce our carbon emissions across the board with the goal of net zero emissions by 2050. The second major goal is education. We will increase educators' climate literacy and seek professional development to support their work. By 2050, we hope to see 100% of Woodland Hills educators designing their own climate action unit connected to their content areas. Last but not least, we have advocacy. We want to increase student engagement in climate advocacy. By 2050, we want 80% of the students to be engaged in climate advocacy. We're well on our way to doing that. So I want to show you a little bit about each committee and the goals that they're working towards and the work that's happened over the past two years. So Communitopia, which is the organization I work for, has provided professional development to teachers across the district. Five educators have participated in our Solution Climate Action Planning Teacher Fellowship. I know that's a mouthful. Um, and their units have impacted roughly 125 students in the district. One first grade teacher at our last committee meeting just a couple weeks ago, actually I think it was last week, described her experience of participating in Communitopia's uh, teacher professional development as the most transformative professional development that she has ever participated in. And as a teacher, I know that that really means something, so we were elated to hear that. Communitopia has also provided 140 climate solution kits to teachers' classrooms that act as a catalyst to community-based projects and action. The climate kits engage students in STEM activities that have kids designing mini green infrastructure projects, conducting trash audits, and exploring clean energy sources locally. Another important part of the Climate Action Plan is student advocacy. Me speaking to you tonight at this meeting is a perfect example of the type of leadership opportunities that are offered to students through the advocacy efforts of the Action Plan. Lauren helps to facil facilitate all of these efforts and partners with Mrs. Everhart and other teachers in the high school to bring these opportunities to us. I'm sure Abby won't disagree that I bring great snacks too. <laughs> if you come for anything, come for the snacks. So one of the first of many of these awesome student advocacy pieces that took place was in the summer and fall of 2020. That there on the left is Tiara Bush. Um, again, I can't show you this video, which was like a commercial for the first ever in the region Youth Climate Action Summit. So these students, Tiara and six of her classmates, took time away from their summer break to plan the first ever Action Summit in the region, and it brought together more than 150 students virtually from all over the region and school districts all over the county, and provided student-facilitated workshops that students from Woodland Hills uh, facilitated, and climate action planning for them to take to their, back to their community. We were also really proud to have Summer Lee, a Woodland Hills alumni, uh, give the outstanding inspirational keynote address to kick off the day. Our summit tiers is what we affectionately call them. The summit tiers learned leadership and event planning skills, earned stipends for their work, and were integral to the summit's success. This year, 
The Climate Action Team met virtually with Representative Mike Doyle's office to advocate for climate-friendly policy at the national level. Pictured on the right is Levi McGraw-Sapp. So he's one of the students who started this work when he was in eighth grade, and here he is in his 11th grader, um, which is one of the students who led the movement. And he had the opportunity to meet with and discuss climate justice with Mayor Ed Ganey, who was the keynote at our most recent Youth Climate Action Summit. And that was hosted by Communitopia at the Convention Center last month. Levi went on to lead a breakout session that day at the summit that inspired youth leaders to find common thing, themes among their climate advocacy in the region. This is the Green Team's Climate Ribbon Tree, our traveling art ins installation which we brought to the Youth Climate Action Summit last month. The Ribbon Tree is an art piece about creating an emotional connection to the fight against climate change by having each person write about what they love and don't want to lose to climate change and tying it to the tree. Mayor Ganey even added a ribbon to the tree. Oh, that's you. <laughs> I go again. Okay. One way we have taken steps to reduce carbon emissions in the past year is by planting trees all over the school district. In partnership with Tree Pittsburgh, more than 100 trees have been planted in the past year alone. These trees clean the air of carbon emissions and provide hands-on learning to the students when they plant their very own tree. And finally, last summer, um, I had the privilege of working alongside Mr. Wilson, Ms. Susan Tansky, a Spanish teacher at the high school who's also involved in the climate action work, and we were invited to present at the National Green Schools Conference to share the outstanding work of this school district. We were thrilled to learn prior, right in the weeks leading up to the um, the presentation that Woodland Hills would be receiving the 2021 National Green Schools Award for Best School System. So this is all of you. This is our district. Our district, right? National award winners and leaders in climate action. And so it begs the question, what is next for us? How do we continue to champion this phenomenal work that students are have worked so hard on and give all of those students and families of the district a bright future. Abby's going to tell you. Imagine our next news headline. Woodland Hills takes steps towards becoming regional leader in solar powered school buildings. In the, latest in the latest climate change committee meeting, it was brought to our attention that we have a huge opportunity before us. I urge you to vote tonight to accept the non-binding letter of intent of intent slash term sheet from the BIA, BAI group for the development of roof and ground mounted solar array at, at the high school at no cost to the district. This is the action we hope to see you take as our new school board and to continue the work of the climate action plan. Please take this next step in service of mine and my classmates future and show your commitment to continuing the work of, the, of climate action in the district. And so in closing, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to listen to us this evening and to hear about all the excellent work that's been happening over the past many years at Woodland Hills. And um, I, as a resident, a nonprofit partner, and believer in the Woodland Hills School District, I too hope that you vote to accept the letter of intent from BAI. I've read the letter and the term sheet, and it is a win, win, win for the district, the students, the families. There's no obligation to the district to explore this option. And the cost savings are no-brainer, in my opinion. And 80% um, of our energy at the high school coming from renewable energy, that would be huge. That would be huge working for our goals for the Climate Action Plan for 2050. So most importantly, I just want to close by saying this is an opportunity for you to show the students that have worked so hard over the years that um, you are going to take this journey with them moving forward and that you're prepared to lead the students with sound decision making that's aligned 
to the goals of the District Climate Action Plan, that you're the leaders who will use their power to make their future more just, healthy, and equitable. And I would love to stay in touch with all of you, and I will be following up with you, sending an email with this presentation, all of these supporting documents. And we just want to say thank you so much for hearing from us tonight. We'd be happy to answer questions, and I'd give a special thank Abby for taking the time to come tonight. We worked on this presentation yesterday in the park. So yes. <laughs> do you have any questions for us? Any questions? Well, on behalf of the board and the school district, thank you very much for your efforts. It's um, a labor of love, that's for sure, and it never goes as quickly as we hope. But thank you for all your work. Yeah, thank you. I'm here to stay, so <laughs> I'll, I will be in touch, I promise you. Thank you so much for taking the time tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. So now, yes, now you may just okay. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Oh, that's all for pub, um, Present presentations. That's yes. all for presentations. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Registered speakers. Yes. Miss Annie Moon. When I'm ready, I'm sorry. She usually gives me instructions. My name is Annie Moon. I live in Shelfont, and I have three children in the district the high school at Dixon and at Turtle Creek. I'm also a Woodland Hills alumna. Um, I need to start by thanking Mr. Belmont, Ms. Scott, Ms. Lawson, and Ms. Curry publicly. You have been fighting for several months now to try to make sure that the public gets the superintendent search we asked for. On top of that, you have been showing up to read to our kids, to try to find out what's going on at Dixon, and to check on security. You are true examples of what public servants should look like. At this point, it is no longer about Dr. Castagna. You all know that I spoke against his hiring in January, but in the past three and a half months, I have been neither impressed nor horrified by Dr. Castagna. My interactions have been neutral. I have, however, been horrified by the majority of this board and their refusal to conduct any type of superintendent search, all while disrespecting members of the community. This search was the same search that you promised when you hired Dr. Castagna against the community's wishes back in January. The vocal minority, as Mr. Scott likes to call us, has been following up repeatedly because this, the hiring of a superintendent without any sort of search, was completely predictable based on your actions at that January meeting. What sounded like the chatter of the paranoid back in January is now coming to fruition. I sat in a parent meeting on Monday about engagement. Here's why we don't have engagement. The community is burnt out. Sure, many members are burnt out due to very difficult life circumstances, but even those of us with privilege, an incredible amount of privilege, are burnt out. We are tired of being told that everything is fine when our kids come home daily with videos of literal brawls from Dixon. We are tired of having to fight to make sure that academic programs like AP programs are not cut. We are tired of taking our valuable time to fill out surveys to gain data that is not used in any meaningful way. The latest example of this Mr. Is Mr. Scott requesting to hire Dr. Castagna permanently just over 48 hours after the community superintendent survey closed? Why would we continue to engage when it is clear that the community is not heard? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Grace Moon. Good evening. My name is Grace Moon. I'm a student at the high school and I reside in Shelfont. I'm sure many of you have heard me speak before, and I hope tonight you can take some time to listen to what I have to say. This packet in my hand is a petition of over 400 students, staff, family, and community members who believe that we need to keep all of our honors, and honors AP and elective courses at the high school. 
I personally am a student with distinguished honours who is planning to take four AP courses next year. It is incredibly disappointing coming from a district whose mission statement says it will make students its first priority and provide an excellent educational experience to hear that these classes might be cut. My classmates and I cannot get an excellent educational experience without these AP elective courses. There were two AP students in Physics two this year, two, one of them being a National Honor Society president. These students would not be prepared for their future college and career plans without these courses. There were three students in AP Chem. Next year, there's set to be a dozen, myself being one of them. Our enrollment numbers are low, sure, but that doesn't mean you need to cut courses and stifle the dreams of my classmates and I. Quite frankly, you haven't been any do doing anything to make our enrollment numbers higher either. While our teachers are out enthusiastically recruiting for their elective courses, feeling the immense amount of pressure you put on them, you have done nothing to help. There is not one teacher I know in our building who is looking at these registration numbers and thinking, I no longer want to teach my courses. If anything, they are teaching more enthusiastically than ever to their three students in an effort to get enrollment numbers up following years. My good friend Madeline Douglas, our senior class president, an extremely bright young woman who is headed to Columbia this fall, commented on our petition. These classes have not only improved my time at Woodland Hills, but have also improved my future endeavors, including college applications. By removing these classes, it would be a disservice to students, especially those going to college. Instead of focusing on removing these classes, you should be focusing on recruiting students to take them. By choosing to remove AP and elective courses, you are doing a disservice to every student and teacher in this district. So for once, listen to the families and your community and choose to make the right educational decision for my peers and the future of the students of Woodland Hills by continuing to offer a wide multitude of AP and elective courses. Thank you. I will leave this with Mrs. Hoffman. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anybody else, Ms. Hawthorne? Yes, Ms. Jen L. Ferry. Did you say Altieri? Alfieri. 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 Can you hear us online? Oh, I just said loud and talk. You did. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. All righty. Um, my name is Jen Alfieri, and I live at 204 Oakview Avenue in Edgewood. I just wanted to say first, as a, a parent of two recent alumni students in the class of 2019 and 2021, I've been following Principal Mann's role as interim principal, despite not having my last child at the high school until the fall. I feel that she's done an extraordinary job of building a rapport with students, supporting teachers, being incredibly visible, showcasing positive events at the high school on a daily basis, communicating quickly, clearly, and honestly, and also acknowledging the, challenging, the challenges of the ongoing pandemic and the unexpected um, res and also just the unexpected resignation of Dr. Woods, who was very well liked and respected by the majority of students, staff, and community. I'm encouraged with what Principal Manns has done in such a short and challenging time and, and ask that you finalize the steps to appoint her as the high school's permanent principal um, if, she, if you've gone through the process. Um, if you haven't gone through the process, it would be really great to have some transparency to those of us that are hoping that she is made the permanent person, um, and that can happen soon. I'd also ask that now that the, super in the interim superintendent is serving his role, that the process for permanently fulfilling this role also be transparent to family, student, staff, and other stakeholders of the, dist of the district. Please provide updates. Are the internal candidates who were not selected during the interim process still interested? And if so, are they being considered? I ask again that you look quote unquote local and within the district at interested candidates who have given years if not decades to our district. And please be open and show integrity in the process. This was lacking the last time and the five new board members who rushed the vote in the spring after providing very little sound reasoning to do so have really impacted the trust of the vast majority of stakeholders. I don't think it is the minority that somebody else said. I think it's the majority. And so this would be an opportunity to do better in this area and serve your constituents. Um, also, please continue to acknowledge the toll sure. and ongoing impact of the students yeah. being virtual for such an extensive period of time, not only due to COVID, but also due to the threats of violence 
Enrollment in many areas, such as AP classes, elective classes, extracurricular clubs, athletics, and other activities have decreased for the number of reasons. If courses need to be discontinued temporarily, please look for the plan that can revive it. And then one last thing, sorry for Dixon, there is a lot of violent um, behaviors that are going on on a daily basis. And I would ask that you look at a recommendation of hiring somebody who is- Ms. Alfair, you, you, hit, you, you, hit, you hit two minutes. We're, we're sorry, but you hit your- okay. All right, okay, no problem, thanks. You're welcome, bye-bye. Any other speakers? No, that concludes the registered speakers. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hawthorne. Um, prior to board matters, uh, Ms. Lawson? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Go ahead. I just dropped my phone. I would like the board to um, add to intend it. I would ask the board to add that to the agenda. Okay. You're making a motion to amend the agenda? Yes. Okay. Is there a uh, uh, with, with, Wait, before I ask, let me clear that. I would like to open up the search for superintendent with, or I don't know if it's two different things. I also like to um, amend the contract language for... That would, that would come separately. You can make the uh, first motion to amend the agenda. We can do that. And then we can make the motion for what the uh, subject matter is that you would like to do. All right, thank you. Okay, so you made the motion to amend the agenda. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Scott. Are there any questions amending? Seeing none, uh, roll call please. Uh, Ms. Scott? Yes. Is Ms. Preach here? I don't know. She's online. Uh, Ms. Preach? Yes. Ms. Lawson? Mr. Flanagan Bay? This is the openness to This is just to a motion to amend the agenda. Yes. Thank you. Dr. McMillan? No. Ms. Carey? Yes. Mr. Scott? No. Ms. Reed? Yes. Ms. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Belmont? Yes. Okay, motion passed. Motion carries. Uh, now for the uh, motion itself. Ms. Lawson? I, um, would like to add a superintendent, a search for superintendent for Woodland Hill School District to the um, agenda. Okay, is there a second? Second. Moved by Ms. Lawson, seconded by Ms. Scott. Are there any questions? Just to clarify, this initial step would be to post a position as soon as is feasible for the HR department, post an open position to start soliciting applications for that role. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Mr. Clanagan Bay. Um, whether this appropriate time or not, I was on the fence about that. Um, I'm no longer on the fence. The um, direction that the condition that the district was in before Dr. Clanagan I don't know, was it's worrisome. Say the Why don't they go in there and talk? Hey, Mr. Klingabay, you can take your mask off so people can hear you. Thank you. I was saying that the um, condition that the district was in before Dr. Constanza took place um, was worrisome, to say the least. And uh, the work that he has done has um, really stabilized the district, and um, especially uh, uh, the I don't know how to describe it, but the inner core of what's been going, what was going on with Woodland Hills, uh, he's brung some stabilization to that and some healing in that process. Um, I've, I've worked with a number of superintendents since the 90s and, um, you know, up to this point. 
and the um, work that he's done has been um, outstanding, to say the least, and has saved the district from some legal issues that could have manifested uh, publicly. So, and you, I've, I've heard testimony about um, Dr. Woods and how much he was liked. This is the man who Dr. Woods came up under in a different district that he brought his skills here, Dr. Woods did, and, and was, was uh, from what I've heard, loved. And now we have the one who was his mentor here looking to do just as good a work that he was doing at West Mifflin. And um, so, and now I'm Dr. Woods is superintendent in another district. So I, I, th I think we have someone who can, who has not only shown that he can run the district and um, build relationships, inner and outer, in the community. Um, so I'm more so now looking at what more can be done? What more can he do? Given, let him have that opportunity to solidify his his skills in moving this district forward in relation to how what he has shown thus far. And um, so, I wouldn't be in favor of uh, the search. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Clanagan Bay. Are there any other uh, comments or questions from the board? Yes, I, I have just want to preach. Ms. Creech. Go ahead, Ms. Lawson. I just want to speak on, like, a, I'm just going to speak on this publicly. I want to do this in a transparent way. If we take the guy out of it, we have a process to follow. And I just think it's fair to our stakeholders and community that we transparently follow this process. That's it. Thank you. I respect the decision of the board. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Creech. Thank you. Um, I will say that I, when I heard you first start out, you know, with some recommendations, I heard something about language and I may have misunderstood um, where, where that was going. I thought it was going in a different direction. And I will say I am all for the process. I have not spoken outward about a lot of things and it's been assumed what my view is. I will say clearly that, and I'm sorry, I'm out of breath because I was walking at the same time, but um, my view is that this process that we've had in place, I can stand wholeheartedly and say that I followed when it was mentioned about the survey. We brought that survey out. I thought that as a board, we all were going to look at it, even though we had a meeting and it was two days or so after the survey was completed. I did take the time to look through that. And uh, I did then match that up to who we have in the interim and look at what the community and our, all of our stakeholders, our administration, staff, um, all were saying that with the areas that were important to them. The one thing that has not happened, unless I'm maybe unaware, is that it hasn't been shared and posted anywhere for the community at large to see what the results were. I, I, I may be wrong about that. I know I've seen it, but uh, did feel like it was important for us to share. But since the majority of the board didn't look at it at the time of that meeting, we weren't able to discuss it. So my intent was share what our feelings were about the um, results of the survey discuss goals as a board, which is recommended by the PSBA, and then look the step after that. So we have, even at the onset of, of starting that survey, the discussion was we would, can, we would have the survey and then also simultaneous, you know, create a search. And that never happened. I don't know, we never, there was never a vote on it or no discussion. So time has continued to go on. Now here we are at the result of the search and I mean survey. And when I looked at the survey results and matched them to our interim, my question then became, what, what isn't he doing? How is he not matching the, the results of this survey? And like I said, to go through each point of that, you know, I felt like that was important to look at what everyone was saying was, was most important and looking at the feedback that was given, which was blended in reference to personal thoughts. But as far as all of the um, areas that we were saying were important, what are we putting in order here? Um, I think the first one offhand, the top one was about personnel. Um, was very important to our, our community. 
and um, you know that relationship, community engagement, those areas um, were two major things that stood out. And we can go through example upon example of all the things that our interim has done and the strides that have been made concerning saving money, concerning building relationships with our community, addressing and tackling tough issues um, for us, or I'll say, I'm sorry, for myself, I can't put myself with everyone, but those I've talked to as well, it was refreshing, especially as a, a new board member to have someone with experience come in and be able to help make some decisions um, concerning key areas. And, and all of us are being educated. We're hearing from educators as well as um, our administration staff concerning the refreshing um, feel and confidence that they have in this leadership. Now, I'm not saying 100%, but it is a large percentage of individuals who feel confident and are excited to work under this leadership. And I'm, I'm speaking of principals and administration, as well as staff members who I've spoken to, who I've received emails from, et cetera. And then you get into our community. Many who, who were turned off by the way that that happened, which I would love to talk about at a different time, but to share that they now, yes, he's, he's won over my confidence and understanding of that fact that he's knowledgeable, but I want the process. For me, that process, like I said, started with the survey. I had no, nothing, no interest, no, no um, vested area in, in reference to Dr. Castagna specifically before that. It was important to have that information to bring the community in and hear what they had to say. And I looked at that. I did not look over that. I, I'm still looking to see if everybody else has. Like I said, I, was, I thought that was our expectation at the last meeting is that we would come ready to discuss it. Now that did not happen, but I did do my due diligence of looking at that and I asked the question that had not been answered on what, what has he not done that would cancel him out to then go on to another step because he's been in the position just as, um, as Principal Mann you're looking at in the interim, she's done it. So the question is, okay, what is she not doing uh, is there is there any challenge to that? So I understand a need to follow a process, but for me, that process did start with hearing from everyone what they valued, what is important, and then look at who's in the position. Has he done what is expected? I believe that Dr. Castagna has exceeded that expectation. And I would love to continue to, to roll out more transparency, but for me, the start was survey, get everyone's feedback, listen to what is said, look at that, and then move to evaluating that survey, matching it up to the person that's in the interim before you take another step. And when I looked at that, I did not see anything. And I opened it up to my, to my fellow board members to ask, what am I missing? Because maybe there's something I don't know. Is there any area of question or, or you know, discrepancy that causes me to doubt that this person is capable of the job? So my concern in a, in a, in a search is to go through the formality of it. If you have somebody already in the position doing the job, well above the expectation, building confidence within our community and these relationships that we've gone into, you know, what else are we looking for to bring and look for another person and match that up against what's already working um, would make me then question who I'm seeing just on paper and saying I'm going to give them a shot as opposed to if I don't have anything, you know, that, that's, that cancels this one out, why am I then going further? So, you know, that is my hope at transparency and, and understanding of where my position is. So I am not interested in the, in the search part of it. Um, I, I definitely welcome a dialogue to that, but I'm explaining to you clearly why. Not just because that's what I want to do, but because I believe looking at the survey was clear to me on what everyone wanted. And I don't see any area where, where Dr. Castagna was lacking in that. Okay. Uh, Ms. Kreese, so you know, uh, I, I believe the majority of the board has reviewed the survey uh, results. I'm sorry, we didn't discuss that because when I asked last week, only myself and I, I think um, Mr. Carlton said that they had. I don't, I don't believe anybody else said they had not looked at it yet. That's what I was told. So I apologize. I missed that. No, no. It, it, since yeah. last week, it's occurred. So are there any other? Uh, Dr. McMillan, did you have anything you'd like to say? Carlton has his hand up. No, um, I just want to agree with everything that Bridget has said. Um, I, I think we heard what the community was saying through the surveys. Um, we've talked to administrators, we've talked to teachers, we've talked to students. Um, Dr. Castagna has exceeded expectations on what is needed as a superintendent. Um, as I mentioned before, we went out on a limb. We had no idea what he was going to bring to the table. He has been interviewing on the job for the last four to five months, and he has done everything that a superintendent is supposed to do. So my question is um, to 
everyone, what is it that you want from a superintendent that he's not already doing? Because from my point of view, he is doing above and beyond. So conducting a search and bringing people in is kind of like a waste of time when we already have a person in place who has built these relationships, um, put programming in place, that have, has a, a, um, a rapport with the, with the scholars. Why would we change that at this point? What else do we want from a superintendent who already has the wheel rolling in the right direction? That's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Scott. Um, I think it's clear where I stand, but I, I'd also just like to say that, um, you know, I would argue that uh, Dr. Castagna's four and a half months in the district uh, have, have yielded more certainty about who um, should lead our district than any process could possibly ever do. Um, you know, and 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 so I I I also would would um, would say that if there was going to be a process like a process like this should have been started um, a long a while ago, um, and so so if we were even going to to do a process, I'm I'm not sure what why it is that we are now looking to do that um, at, at this late date as opposed to have done it um, uh, months ago. So I don't know if that's a, uh, I, I'm still, I mean, I think that's a, a question that the public should, should um, understand too. Well, that was the reason why I also asked that the board amend his contract, not the end of June 30th. Ms. Lost, we're gonna have- I thought that I would- yeah. I'm sorry. We're gonna have our solicitor look at that for us. Yeah, Lawson, that's what I thought you were going to say, okay, and that's what I was problem. interested but again, in, Lawson. That's what I thought you were going to say, and I was interested in that, um, but then I, I was confused. Okay. Um, again, I respect the board. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, any, I have comments. Ms. Um, Scott. So those of you who grew up with me here in the district and those of you who know me personally uh, know I'm extra. I'm an overachiever. I'm constantly being called someone who tries to do the most. And for that reason, I'm never satisfied. I want the best. I want the best for my kid, and I want the best for your kids too. And I'm not disparaging any of the work of Dr. Castagna because he has demonstrated in these three months, because by my counting, he started on February 1st, of a 12-month contract, that he is dedicated to being an educator. We still have nine months that we can use that time wisely. It's not a waste of time to conduct a thorough search to make sure he is the best to make sure that he is meeting and checking every single box for our kids, for our educators, and for our stakeholders. And quite frankly, no, it's not good enough that a survey with fewer than 300 respondents in a district with thousands, tens of thousands of stakeholders, including but not limited to our scholars, their families, our staff, and taxpayers who may not have students in the district. That is a drop in the bucket. We have not gotten buy-in from our community at large, and this next step of opening up and posting a position does not disparage Dr. Castagna at all. It allows us to see what else is out there. And the next step of that process, Bridget, to your point about looking at someone on paper and then making a decision, we're not just looking at people on paper. We're looking at them. We're vetting them. We're interviewing them. Then we're whittling it to a few quality candidates and taking them on a roadshow around the district. That is how this process has been done in the past. That is how every other district worth their salt is doing this process right now. And to not do it for our families and our kids and our scholars and our staff is a disservice and you should be ashamed of yourselves. Thank you, Ms. Scott. I really don't, I don't want that ashamed of yourself piece. We're, and to me, we can have these kind of conversations behind closed doors one-on-one. -on -one. I'm all for opening up, dialoguing, learning from each other. All I, no, wait, wait, I, I listen to you, Marilyn. I have no idea what you're saying. I listen to you though. I took in what you were saying, just like I took in what, what uh, Ms. Lawson said, which I said was that that was the part that I thought you were going to, that I would be interested in, because that gave me a level of comfort when you talked about the contract. That then made sense to me, you know, because I know initially part of the push for this serve for the um, superintendent position was that we were adamant about having someone in that place by the time school started. So that time frame is still just as valuable. Is it possible? I asked that question and I was told yes, even in doing this search, that it would be possible to have 
you know, someone in that position, that would be, you know, priority number one. Well, priority number one absolutely is having the best candidate. I still have not heard any anything other than what sounds good to be honest about being able to go through the process with the unknowns. And I frankly will say I've been in this district for 11 years and I've had four kids come through this district and I am concerned about the unknowns because in my experience in the past, those unknowns did not go well for me and people that I live, that I interact with and that I work with on a daily basis. Now we have a vast district, which is why I'm open to having communication, but this type of dialogue and suggestions would, would be great for us to have in the onset, not like publicly where it's thrown out there and it looks like uh, you know we're looking at it on different ends. We all have the same goal, I thought, which is the best interest of every kid in the district to put the best candidate, especially in this position. So I go back to Ms. Lawson's point and say that that is something that I would be interested in entertaining if everyone would be in agreement with that, which is the language of Dr. Castagna's um, uh, contract. And unless that happens, I wouldn't be interested in doing a search. Okay, the language piece, uh, Ms. Creech, uh, our solicitor is gonna clarify that for us. Um, you can look at this separate from what that language is. Um, Ms. Curry, you wanted to say something? I was just gonna point out the survey is on the website. The survey results have been on there since, since Tuesday. Okay. Um, Thank you. And, and I support a search uh, because that is the process as Ms. Scott has said. Um, No, I think that's it. I'm sorry. Okay. I... Well, if just something else comes up, we're not stopped. <laughs> Ms. Reed, would you like to comment? Yeah. Um, I agree with um, a lot of what uh, Bridget said, also um, Mr. Scott said, and Dr. McMillan, um, and also Mr. Uh, Clanigan. Um, I'm also in favor of a process. Um, and with that being said, I also appreciate the things that Dr. Castagna has done. There's a reason why I voted to hire him. Um, and like Mr. Clanigan said, as far as stabilizing the district, he has done that. Um, I'm also open to see uh, resumes for other candidates. And yeah, I mean, we can, I guess the next board may also get into, because I keep hearing these uh, things about how he got here and all that other stuff. We can actually get into that next month. So yeah, I'm in favor of a, um, a search. And at the same time, I do appreciate Dr. Castagna. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Does that conclude your remarks? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Curry, anything else? Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I have collected myself. Um, I'm just finding it very difficult to, he to hear board members concerned that there's not enough time for a search when they have blocked us from discussing a search for some have dragged their feet. I can't hear you guys, I'm getting broke up. You can take your mask off if you want. I have issue that you are saying there is not enough time for a search when you have blocked discussion of said search for so long, when we have asked repeatedly to start this process as early as possible. That's all I'm I sorry, that's not true. Right. No, I, I can speak to that actually. Uh, I, want, I, want to, I want you to be very clear. I never said there was not enough time for a search. I said there was no need for a search when we have someone who is in the position and he is competent of doing the position. So I never wanted a search because I was completely satisfied with who we have in the position right now. That's just coming from me. Thank you, Dr. And also I never said that I was not in favor of a search. I, just, I said something about when I wanted to discuss a search, but I never said I wasn't in favor of one and I didn't drag anything. So for one thing, if there was this concern about it, it could have been brought up during a public meeting. So for instance, like the, um, the when I called for the um, RFP for the forensic audit, um, not everyone knew I was gonna say that. I said that during the meeting and the reason why I didn't say it sooner 
is because I know that um, this was discussed before and it, there wasn't enough support to move it forward with the old board. Um, because there were plenty of uh, community members, including myself, who said they wanted to have a forensic audit. That was never moved. And we're also not going to blame the old superintendent for that. Let's not do that, because um, I know where that's headed. So one, if there was an issue, you could very easily bring that up during a board meeting. That's the beauty of having uh, board meetings, public board meetings. So one, that's not true. And um, as far as I'll get into it. Just bringing Dr. Castagna here. We, the majority of the board, were in favor of a process. You all wanted us to just appoint someone, even though we could have been faced with an ethics violation for doing so. We were threatened in a letter about it, which is, public, which is in our emails. So what do you mean? So let's stop. Under, you're undermining the, the majority of the board. You're misleading the public. And also in that letter, it also threatened for um, whoever wrote it, threatened to go to the state with it. So with the allegations in it. So it's like, what, what do you mean? You're undermining us. We, are, we want a process. That is just it. And a board is well within their rights to go ahead and appoint someone who's been doing the job. So. The, the, yeah, there's no need to make any type of disparaging comments about anyone. At no point did I ever say that I was not in favor of having a search. Some folks didn't want to, and, and that's fine. That's, they're well within the right to do so. But we're not going to keep um, making these false comments and, and having people come in here and like attack us with false allegations time after time. I'm tired of it. So just cut it out. It, it, it what? Go ahead and dispute that because that letter's in our email. Okay, this is Ms. Creech here. And you, and you wanted us to proceed with your, your process appointment knowing that we could have been in trouble for it. Now go ahead and say it's not, and I'll make copies and bring it to this board meeting, the next board meeting. I'm not playing with you all. Stop doing that. Okay, Ms. 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 Creech, I'm sorry. I just wanted to add. Um, in reference to the, to the response, I think it was to Ms. Curry about, um, you know, stopping the, the search. I've never said absolutely no search. I did say that I was interested in starting with the survey. That was my, my first step of like, let's go there. And I'm going to keep saying that because that's really the only thing that I ever said was survey first, look at that, then this. That was my communication of steps. So I don't ever recall having like this formal vote where we shared and everybody said the majority has and the minority is this. Um, I also will say, while plenty of votes have gone through that it's like this 5-4, that is not my perception of the board. And those who know me on the board, off the board, I would hope that no, you know, I try to operate in integrity and honesty, but also in communication. Some of that is not shown throughout here because it's being clumped into they and them. And I'm not a they or them. I stand on my own. And I will say that the reason why on the onset that I did even um, vote to bring Dr. Castagna in, one of the major reasons was coming into the board, being new and, and being hit with all of these decisions, it was important to me to have someone who did do the job, who has had experience. While we communicated, we shared that we wanted to do the work to get together as a board, whether, whether it's a board retreat or get to know each other. We shared a lot of um of situations, examples, and suggestions on how we should do that, and we still have not, because, you know, that's important with these nine, whether it's that we agree or disagree, at the end of the day, Miss Lawson, I'm going to throw you out there, because when we talk, that's the one thing that you always say, which is, you know, you share your point, and then, but, you know, it's, it's up to the nine, like, whatever that decision is, we, we say it, and we move forward, and I would like to see that with all of us, so that hard work of getting to know each other, and why we all came on here to begin with, that was something that we said we wanted to do and just have not done as time has gone on because of whether it's emotions or time or, or our own commitments, I don't know. But my, my suggestion or, or encouragement to bring Dr. Stagna on was while we have somebody who can, who can stabilize and bring things together, which I feel like has happened, then it's like, okay, now let us get together because we have to make things work. We have to decide, we have to vote on very major issues and we got to get, get along at least for the sake of the decisions that have to be made. So that point of us working together is is huge. We're not, not necessarily about the perception of what the community thinks, but about us genuinely putting our arms up and doing the work of it together. 
So never, never said no to a search, but I said the priority was for me to, to get in there, do this survey, especially after the backlash that happened, to be able to hear what people have to say. I understand that it wasn't the majority of the, of the community that gave the feedback. That was, that's, you know, a huge challenge when you put something out there like that. I understand that. But still, we, we just have not communicated all together on this is what we want to do. And I feel like, you know, it, it is sometimes whether it's two, whether it's three you know, whatever, that it's like, let that, let us do this, let them do that or whatever. And it has to be the nine as best as we can. So, you know, that is my hope as we continue to move forward, that we do the hard work of making ourselves work together and not positioning it in a way where it's like you against me, because that should not be the, key, the case at all. Definitely not with me. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Creech. Mr. Scott, I see your hand up. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to, um, you know, I think if, if, if we do move forward with this process, we do have to, there has to be discussion about, um, how it would be paid for. Um, you know, uh, it was mentioned that we're gonna do a, a road show and, you know, have candidates potentially flying in and things along those lines, um, you know, that, that's gonna cost. So I think, I don't know that there's been any, um, you know, communication about how that would look and, you know, what, what the cost of that would, um, would actually be. Um, and I, 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 just, I also wanna just make the point that, you know, throughout this, I, I, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair to, um, candidates I, that that we're bringing in that we're I think we need to be we need to make sure that this is a fair process for people who are actually going to apply for this position. I think that there's been a lot of things that have been talked about to where if if somebody if candidates were going to apply they're not coming into something that um, is necessarily where uh, stakeholders and that this person already has support. So you know I, I think there could be issues with. Our, our candidate pool too. But those could be a uh, discussion for um, another day. But I think they're things that we have to make sure that we communicate uh, clearly about. Okay, thank you, Mr. Scott. Mr. Clanningham Bay. Um, <clears throat> I've never uh, been against a search, never said let's do a search, never said let's put off a search. When the search was brought up early on, uh, going back January, February, however early it was, I felt it was too early to be talking about a search. The district need to get stabilized and had to see what Dr. Castagna could do in relation to that, getting us stabilized in order for possibly for someone to be to take over for whenever uh, he would leave. But um, and with some of the things he's done uh, impressively in, in a short amount of time, now I wanna see what more can be done. He's not perfect. There's a couple things that I would like to see done, but I know these the things that I would like to see done takes time. Can't do it in a quick fix. So uh, with the job that he has shown, um, I just can't see being in favor of, of a search when we've got such a strong candidate, interim superintendent doing the job. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Clanagan Bay. I don't see any more comments or hands up. Can we uh, call for the vote, please, Ms. Hossel? Uh, so we have a couple of questions online. I think there's a uh, community member. I oh. think it's his new motion. They have to be able to speak. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you, Mr. Kim. Go ahead. All right, the first one is Mr. Tim Madel. Go ahead. Mr. Madel, go ahead. Uh, hold your comments to two minutes, please, and identify your address. Sure. Uh, it's Tim Madel, 151 Gordon Street in Edgewood. Um, <clears throat> I am. I was certainly opposed to Dr. Castagna in January. I, I have liked some of what I've seen. I have not liked other things I've seen. My issue is still with some of the behavior I've seen from the board. Carlton Scott, when we talked, you were very clear that you intended to do a public search. You, you explicitly stated that to me and you've explicitly stated that to the public. So to not even go to the steps of advertising the position, seeing who the pool is, and having at least a few meetings to get community input means you're not hitting even the, the bare minimum of what, the, what that statement could mean. 
And I, I, I saw a lot of indignancy about some of the statements that were be, being made about board members. If you do the exact opposite of what you told people that you were going to do, that is not acting with honor and that is not acting with integrity. I, I understand if you end up where you think you're gonna end up, but you have failed to do what you told the community you were gonna do. And that is unfair to the community. And that is unfair. That's unfair to Dr. Castagna if he's the right guy because people will not, will always be opposed to him because you failed to do what you said you were gonna do. Does that complete your remarks, Mr. Madel? It does. Thank oh, you for your time. Thank you. Any other hands up from the public, Ms. Hawthorne? Um, Mr. I have to respond to that. Um, you know. Hold on, Mr. Scott. Let's oh, look. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, have their input and then uh, we'll get back to you. Are there any? I, there, Mr. Are, there, there are two others. Uh, Scott Watson, Ms. Hamlet, and Ms. Alfieri are all on. I don't have to. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kim, let's unmute Ms. Alfieri first. I'm looking for her one second. All right, I do not see Mrs. L. Ferry. And I, oh, there she is. Hey, sorry, can you hear me? I had to uh, leave to drive something. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to respond to a couple. I think it was the one comment about you know, looking at people that you don't know on paper. And I do understand that. I think that what a big, and maybe you could just clear it up and be transparent without bringing names to the table, because I realize that you can't do that. But many of us feel that there are people within the district who have worked hard for a very long time and invested practically their whole careers with our kids. Are those people interested? Can you answer that? Have they even had an opportunity to apply? So those are not looking at people on paper and taking a chance. Those are people that have done hundreds, if not thousands of things for our kids. And it's the same thing. In the end, if, if Dr. Kinsaka is the one that, that he, everybody believes after an actual search is the right person, that's great. I mean, I want, you know, again, if there are people out there that are trying to at least put their names in for the district, please don't ignore them. I just, I don't understand where there's no value in the commitment that you've already seen and looking locally within our school district. Now, if those people don't exist, that would be something that would be very helpful to tell the public because that is at least what seemed to be happening when the process first started. And yes, I was on those meetings and it was very clear that, that there would be a search. And again, if you come back and he is the best candidate, great. But it's like you're having this big race and he's the only one that's been entered. And so again, if he's the fastest runner and he is the best, I agree with the last speaker. The respect is, is going to take longer to get and that's not fair for him. Have a fair race. Win it fairly. Be the right one that is selected because there, there actually are others um, who are being considered. It just it doesn't even make any sense. Like you wouldn't do that with any job. And this is a, a huge job for all of our kids in our community. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Alferi. Uh, Ms. Koss Watson? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, I'm Natalie Watson and I am 1272 Britain Road in Braddock Hills. And I have three children, one at Dixon and two at Edgewood. <laughs> I'm just gonna go down a little list here. I made some notes. Um, first to the five new board members, um, as I have asked previously and emailed, um, I don't really understand why there is a problem going through a customary search that even the Pittsburgh Public School District is doing right now that all school districts do across the fine state of Pennsylvania. What you are doing is going against the process that has been in place for decades. <laughs> what you are choosing to do right now by saying, oh, look, 
because Tackner's great. He's fine. Even though everyone threw a fit and didn't want him to begin with. And we all said, nope, we're doing it anyways. Um, and oh, by the way, but there'll be a real search. Um, oh, no, we're not going to do that now. Um, it's all recorded. It's in public meetings. Everyone could go on the website and can watch what everyone has said. Um, for Mr. Clanigan Bay, what I want to know is you keep mentioning the stabilization that has taken place. You cannot give any specifics as to what the stabilization is. I am not confirming or denying my feelings regarding a stabilization of the district. I'm sure the board members know a darn sight more than I do about what this means. Please communicate what it is you're describing so that we can all be thrilled about this change and this stabilization. Um, also, you can like a candidate and also do your job and have a customary and appropriate search. Um, Terry, thank you so much for fighting for this. I really appreciate you being transparent and calling for what needs to happen. Um, Carlton, you said in this meeting that, um, you know, there isn't enough time to do this. You are the one that made that comment. You are also the one in January that said before the vote even took place, for Dr. Castagna to be put in place that um, this was already a done deal. So this was already decided in your eyes and that's why we all got incredibly angry because Ms. we were all here to speak. Ms. Watson, your, your um, two minutes have expired. It is not disparaging if Carlton literally said it. Bridget, Ms. Watson, your, your two minutes have expired. Thank you for your remarks. Miss um, Hamlet. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm not going to say anything about the superintendent search. These people are going to rip you apart up here because of that. What my message is, is to the board, not just those five, not the old four, the whole board, all nine of you all. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Do you see how you each talk to each other? You talk to each other like you're that one of you is an adult, everybody else is a child. Each one of you should be ashamed and I'm going to tell you why. First, the all four board members, you each had a hand in what we are dealing with today and I'll tell you why. For years, you knew there was a problem with our last superintendent. You did not take any action whatsoever to get rid of him. Then you get rid of him during the election time when new members who feel like they should have had the right to choose whether he stayed or went, which it, I'm not even debating and because I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm not saying that he's gone. But then we're in this position and you all used a dirty trick back in what, November, that you are now mad that the new board is able to use now. You taught them that trick, the new board members. You all are mad because of the little dirty trick they pulled back in November, even though that's the same trick you're using now. Each one of you has a hand in what's happening. You all should be ashamed of how you talk to each other, how you relate to each other. And then you have the audacity to want to know why the general public up here looks at you all crazy, talks to you all crazy. You want to get on Facebook. You want to talk to each other and say, why are these people upset? We have every right to be upset. You all act worse than the children in this district among yourselves. There is no unity among you. No, you all don't have to agree, but you at least could be civilized while you're sitting up there as board members, whether you're online or in person, act civilized. You are acting very uncivilized and you should be ashamed of your behavior because what you're modeling for the community and what you're modeling for these kids is shameful at this point. It's a shame how you all act. I mean, it really is. And I'm glad I get to say it because you can't tell me I can't tell you to be ashamed when you should right. be ashamed. Two minutes are up. Your two minutes are up. Thank you. Are there any other hands from the public up, Mr. Wilson? There are not. There are not. Okay, Mr. Scott, I see your hand up, and we'll, uh... Uh, yeah, yeah, I just uh, yeah, um, it's it's been said at least a, a couple times that that I've um, that I said I was in favor of uh, uh, of doing a search. Uh, you know, I I'll go back and look at the 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 recordings, but any 
I, I can't imagine a scenario where I would have committed to um, such an action um, you know, at, at any point. I, I, you know, I, I weigh, look at all the circumstances, weigh and weigh my decision based off of, um, of, of what's, what's occurring at the time. So I, can't, I cannot imagine a scenario where I promised anything or I said that um, we would be doing a search and anybody who can point me to a meeting where I said that, um, um, please do. Um, and, I, and I'd be happy to address that um, also. So that, that's all, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Scott. Uh, can, I, can I say something? Is, everybody, is that okay? Um, just, just because obviously you're talking about the superintendent position that I'm, that I'm seated in right now. I just wanna say something publicly after listening to all this, I'm just trying to take it all in. Public education doesn't owe me anything and I owe it everything. Everything I have is because of public education. My mother and father were the first two in their families, both sides, to go to college, and they went to become teachers. So they raised us with a true respect and appreciation for this profession and, and working with kids and creating opportunities for kids. That's why I'm here, okay? Whether it's the next two months, the next five years, none of this matters to me about what I do tomorrow morning when my alarm goes off and I come to work. So I just want to make that clear, because I think sometimes I get emails from the public directing me to direct the board or direct me to direct one side. Like this is deja vu to me in a process I'm numb to. Um, I, I, have to I have to just commit myself to the job responsibilities that this job entails. And it's a lot, and here was a lot. And I could speak to specifically what I did to stabilize what was going on. But I, it's not about that. I don't even know that it's about me at this point. It's not. I just want to let everybody know that Regardless of all this, I'm here to leave this district, this position, this central office in a better place than when I found it. And that will be my legacy, whether I'm here two months or five years. I promise you that. So like I said, tomorrow I'll get back to work. Um, and none of this impedes that either way. So just know that, please. Okay, thank you, Dr. Castagna. Uh, Ms. Hawthorne? Uh, we see no other uh, hands up. Can we call for the vote, please? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Creech? Sorry, my mute. Yes. Ms. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Clanagan Bay? No. Dr. McMillan? No. Ms. Curry? Yes. Mr. Scott? No. Ms. Reed? Yes. Mr. Belmont? Yes. Uh, motion carries. Uh, we can get together and figure out what the process will be. Um, moving on to board matters. Um, have your hand up. What's up? Um, no. Uh, before we run, I know we have a preliminary budget proposal that is on the agenda for approval. Ms. Shaver and I just wanted a couple minutes. Yeah. It's a quick couple slides. The highlights of things of the public before the board votes on that. After that, we'll be voting by consent. So it'll be one big swoop. So it shouldn't be much longer. Yeah. Dr. C, can I just clarify for the public that we're voting on adding it to be reviewed. We are not voting on the budget at tonight's meeting. That'll be in June's meeting. Okay. Thank this you. Perfect. <clears throat> Well, just to, just to begin, um, Ms. Schaefer obviously has been working extremely hard preparing this. Um, it's been a very you know, difficult progress because we are projecting. please, if you're done. We're projecting in May um, revenues and expenditures for 14 months from now, right? That will be audited 16 months from now. So you have to basically give your best guess and your best projection. Like Ms. Scott mentioned, this is a proposed budget that if approved tonight will go on display for 30 days. It will be available for public review uh, for anyone to add their input into it and then we would be asking for a final budget approval in June. This budget could change from now to the final proposal and that's why we display it and ask for feedback. So we just want to highlight what's included in tonight's presentation so the public's clear about that and then uh, again it will be uh, available for you to review. So okay. Ms. Schaefer, you want to 
Okay, so significant items in this budget is there's no tax increase at this time. There's no furloughs. Um, the homestead subsidy increased by uh, $573,802. Um, this qualifies, qu this qualified properties will see a reduction in their taxes of approximately 56. Like the usual homestead ex exemption is like 204. Um, it's going to be up to $270. So the scoop financing option is included in this budget, resulting in a surplus, not in the scoop, but in the surplus of revenues over expenditures of 2.2 million, 2,279,546. 2, million, Mr. Ditkus, here, if anyone, anyone on the board here has questions on the scoop financing, um, it is actually one of the board actions tonight as well. And just real quick on that. So there's two things, two financing options in this budget. Both are being exercised. First, the loan for the Wolverina project, and then second, the scoop finance. The scoop finance, I believe, was about $2.6 million, $2.7 million in reduced expenditures for next year, but allowed us with both of those uh, to pass a budget that is positive 2.2 million. So that's just the budget without the fund balance um, included in it yet. And Ms. Shaver, I'd like to yeah. add also that um, we have about 1.2 of that accounted for for the Wolverina, and then we'll have to uh, figure out how it is we're going to spend the balance of that money too. So just to put that on your radar screen. So, so actually the but, financing yeah. options are the the two million for the Wolverina, which for the Wolverina and additional um, improvements, and then two point five to do a scoop financing. It's the it's both of them. They're both in there. Okay. And just for clarification, the Wolverine is going to be we're looking at two million. No, we're looking at one point two, but we've got a lot of work around the district that needs done. Okay. And gotcha. Okay. And he can testify Thank too. Thank you. That's good. The other significant budget items, I think the board's heard this before, that Pizer's employer rate will increase to 35.26 percent, so it's 35.26 35 cents per every dollar. Health insurance costs increase, will increase by 8 percent. There are 27 positions charged to Essers. The 2022-2023 budgeted dollars for these salaries and benefits are over 2.8 million. So the the district has to be mindful that in the subsequent years, there's going to be uh, the need to have funding for these positions, so we don't have to furlough. Charter school and transportation, um, we can look for increases there, uh, specifically significant increases in gasoline and diesel. Um, so uh, here's some of the ideas. I'm going to let Dr. Castagna address these curriculum and staffing. Um, as far as what the plan is for the um, next year. It's easy for me to do it on this side, but for curriculum and staffing, these are all resources that the board is aware of. We've already approved most of these. The Excel program is on tonight. The Dixon Guidance Council position will be posted soon. But these are all resources we are guiding into the middle school next year. So first is an additional guidance counselor. Second, we have a culturally responsive aid or management program coming out of Texas A&M, no cost in the district. It's a pilot program through their IRB, so um, we are working as a research uh, collaboration with them. The Just Discipline program was uh, approved at the April board meeting. It's going to go into a place kind of define more of a uh, plans and response to interventions. We have our new math curriculum that was already approved uh, to replace the, the old curriculum at the middle school and our restorative practices coordinator through Pitt. That was a... Uh, an outsourced program that's coming in that we're splitting the cost of. So all of these programs will be in place at Dixon starting in the fall. The K-12 STEM robotics, we're very proud of this. We're taking this on aggressively. We're going to jump in full steam, K-12. Uh, for the next school year, there are so many. Yes? I'm sorry, I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. Folks at home can't hear you because you're waiting for Oh, me. I'm sorry. I thought I was loud enough. I apologize, <laughs> totally. So if you could see the screen, what I was just saying, those first six bullet points are all directly uh, in place for uh, Dixon starting in the fall. And then the K-12 STEM Robotics Initiative with VEX, we had that a committee at the first display. And then uh, we also talked about it at the Parent Advisory Council on Monday with uh, Mr. McKenna. 
the uh, personnel changes that we're recommending for New Year. There's a new position that we're asking the board to create, which will be a director of WOA and administrative services. We really feel that we need one person dedicated to growing this program, recruiting cyber students from outside the district, and also looking at some curriculum options uh, that are out there that might exist that might work more effectively than we have. So we want a full-time person dedicating their time to that. We're looking at about 300 students enrolled in there. We hope to bring back another 50 to 60 next year to get that closer to 400. The other positions are open positions we need to fill. Uh, the PIMS coordinator, Ms. when Ms. Keeler took the job at Gateway, our coordinator of security services, uh, our high school principal position, and our assistant director of special education. These are all things we need to get acting on soon. And hopefully at the June board meeting, when we make our final budget presentation, we could do a full plan, vision, mission, goals, staffing that's in place for the 22-23 school year. So here's a snapshot of um, the projected revenues and the, uh, what's currently as the budgeted 22-23. Uh, um, basic ed instructional. I did um, recognize the, um, the increase with the level up funding, uh, but I didn't project the full estimated amount that the governor was proposing um, because I was a little bit concerned that that was too high and not uh, realistic. Um, any questions on any of these? The, the line 8700 Commonwealth Sharing Funds, um, that's your, where your ESSERS dollars are. So um, you want to be mindful that that $4.9 million has that corresponding expenditures in the expense uh, snapshot you have here. Salaries, benefits. The charter school and transportation's in that 500 other purchase services line. And here, when you go down to the 900 other financing uses, you see the impact of the SCOOP finance, which pretty much helps us create that surplus of 2.2 million. Um, things that could potentially uh, impact that, though, um, are if the revenues are not quite as spot on as we hope they are because basic ed, special ed subsidy, this will, we'll get true figures but later after this budget is passed. Any questions? <laughs> um, so this is considerations. The salaries are, that are charged to ESSERS will need to be funded with general fund dollars in subsequent years, as will substitute services, which is uh, Kelly and security. We have to be mindful of the declining enrollment here at Woodland Hills. The homestead subsidy could revert back to the lesser amount in future years. And as I mentioned before, the actual basic ed and special ed subsidies might not be as high as anticipated. Um, and just this is other, also along those same lines. The proposed budget reflects not only salary and benefits for ESSERS, but for Title I, Title II, as well as pre-K. As with the increase in the salaries, PEASERS and health care, it should be recognized that for required spending, such as set-asides and community engagement, these salaries may have to, a portion of these salaries may have to be charged back to the general fund. Uh, revenue line will not change, but the expenditure side will, reducing the district's fund balance. Additional changes may be a result of unanticipated expenditures that will impact my projection for 21-22. Emergency repairs, settlements, and if tuition and special education was over underestimated, still unknown is the transportation deduction, which I mentioned in committee, which is approximately 1.5 million, and whether or not that will occur. And that's a carryover from COVID, so we're kind of waiting for more information on that. So you have to, you can only, you can only make decisions based upon what you know today. And that's the plan that Ms. Schaefer and I are presenting to the public based on what we know now. Now, the proposed budget, for budget by Governor Wolf could change. As it changes, when we get updated information, we'll plug that information in. As our books this year are audited from the previous school year, if there's anything that changes, we will add that information in. So this is our best guess roadmap for all the information we have today and we are presenting it to the board and to the public and I think another area too like for example some of the things that I'm that the board will bring up like whether is what is the cost of the search like I don't have that built into our budget the forensic auditing um, 
I don't know how to project that because it's unknown like what or all of the RFP that we submitted um, will be approved by the board and what the kind of costs those are. So we have to think about those things and how they're going to whittle away at that little 2.2 surplus. That's all I have. I just say surplus is a new word. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have to say that I made the budget tight. I made the budget tight. So we have to be like, we have to diet um, so we can get our payroll done and, and keep what we can. So. And, and I will say this, Val is very conservative. She is, and I, um, she probably wants to kill me for saying that, but no. I, I think she's extremely conservative on some of her projections. We could take what the governor is proposing right now, but I think in reality, and she's probably correct, he's not going to, he's not going to get the support to have it go that far. There still is a $4 million <coughs> fund balance on top of that $2 million surplus. So, you know, we're $6 million to the good. Now, with the the positions we have charged to Essers and with the continued increase for Peasers and health insurance, that snowball is coming down a mountain. We know that. And so we have to be aware of that. Um, with declining enrollment, you typically have a declining in staffing numbers. Now, we haven't done that yet. And we, we weren't ready to really uh, look at eliminating any positions. So this is going to be our mission now. We have a marketing plan for next year. We need to recruit kids back to the district. We need to keep the students that are here. We have to start reversing some of those downward trends in enrollment because that's something that you can't get around. So, okay. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Uh, moving on to board matters. Okay, and now this is the, uh, we voted on 2.1 last week, so this is the uh, consent vote. So this will approve all items on the agenda since we discussed these all at the agenda meeting last week and nothing new was added to the agenda. So we will ask for a motion and a second to approve all board agenda, board agenda items by consent tonight. First of all, are there any items that any board member wants to pull off and vote on I'm separately? Just, just gonna ask that. We can do that after the motion in the second. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. By Ms. Scott, second by Ms. Curry. Are there any items that folks would like to withdraw to vote on separately? Mr. Scott, Ms. Creech, Ms. Lawson, Dr. McMillan? I don't see. I don't see anything right now that I want to vote on separately. No, I don't. Thank you. Sure. All righty, any questions about any of it? Okay, seeing none, roll call please. The vote's open. Ms. Lawson? Oh. I voted online, yes. but I said yes. I see. Dr. McMillan? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Scott? Yes. Okay, motion carries. All right, thank you. All right, that takes care of the uh, agenda. We're going to move on to old business. Does anybody have anything under old business? <coughs> Nothing under old business. Under new business. Anybody on Zoom have anything under new business? Mike, I don't know if this goes under new business and I could be wrong, but where do we discuss um, the contractual amendment? Oh, that's, that'll come up later. We have to have, Mr. Rakunas has to look at that. Okay, just wanted to be sure. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other, anybody else on Zoom? Okay. Um, I have two items under new business. Uh, the first one uh, has to do with uh, committees. For the benefit of the public, I want to be clear as to how our uh, committees work. Um, by the Friday before committee week, committee week is the first Tuesday and Wednesday of each month, 
the department heads put together their agendas for the committee meetings the following week. Those are submitted to the superintendent who has those posted to the website and determines the order of what the committees will be taking into account presentations, other stuff, and also to allow the public to gauge. If they're busy getting kids somewhere, they can look and say, okay, I'm interested in that. It looks like it's midway through, engage from there. Then, from that point on, if the public, uh, say somebody calls one of us and says, hey, what about, and it, well, that's transportation. Let's put that on the transportation agenda. So that board member contacts the chair of the transportation committee, who then consults with the department head, and that gets added to the agenda. Then um, the agenda is reviewed on Tuesday, Wednesday night, the, the agendas, and the committee chairs uh, run each committee, and then the uh, superintendent <coughs> Uh, moves the meetings along in between. Okay, we're done. Now we're going to move on to this next committee. And then that gets posted again on the uh, website. There's a gender review where the board leadership looks at everything, says these have been added, maybe that was eliminated, and then that agenda is put on the website. Now the public's had three chances to see this. And then the following Wednesday, the voting meeting, uh, it can be discussed again, and the public has another opportunity to see this. So I just wanted to uh, bring that up for the benefit of everybody. Um, are there any questions concerning that? Okay. Yeah, Thank uh, no, I have a question. So yeah. you're proposing, so the board member contacts the who exactly? So staff to put something on the agenda for committee? Yeah, the committee chair uh, is in charge of that agenda. Right. The department head submits the first the, the agenda to begin with. But it's we're supposed to be going through the superintendent. It's supposed to be superintendent. The superintendent can do that. No, the superintendent. He he looks at the item, the order of the uh, uh, committees, and says, okay, we're going to go finance first. We're going to go athletics second. Whatever the order is, the the committees are committee chair driven right um the reason why i'm questioning this is because we've had confusion about how things got on the agenda um because the entire still it it's supposed to go through the superintendent we've mm -hmm. had discussions about this already the superintendent will let us know and that it goes on the agenda um we're not to or at least that's what I, I'm quite sure no, no. we had a discussion about this. We're not supposed to contact them directly. We can just have no. the super, we're supposed to go through the superintendent. No, I understand your point. Um, no, the difference is this. If there is confusion where um, somebody in one of, our one of our programs contacts a board member and the board member says, okay, we'll put on committee. But the department head has already been consulted about that. What we have to do is get the people to understand, the people that work here, you go to your department head to have something put on the agenda. And then if somebody from the public calls, I had a, a grandfather call about uh, safety bus stops. Kids have their earbuds in. So I said, okay, we'll bring, that's transportation or safety, uh, contacted the chair of those committees, and we brought it up for discussion. So th there, there's that difference. Somebody from the public who calls, they don't call the superintendent correct. We're their elected official. They know who we are. And that, that's the way we've been doing it for years, that part of it. The differentiation you're bringing up is if somebody within one of our departments has uh, talked to that department head and then maybe didn't get the answer they wanted and then goes to the board, in that instance, you need to support the department head and the superintendent can uh, handle that. Um, the confusion came from board members going directly to the department head and then placing things on the agenda. And at times, so we're sharing things with the public mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily supposed to be discussed at that time. So for instance, or, you know, and it's coming up during the meeting without the rest of us knowing anything about it. So 
um, I, I hear what you're saying, but that caused confusion when someone's calling staff and they're saying, hey, just throw this on the agenda. No one understands why it's on the agenda mm -hmm. and it's being brought up to the public. Um, I believe there was something, um, something that had something to do with, I don't, I don't remember if it was curriculum or something like that. Um, or something with programming was mentioned before and um, it really wasn't something that we could do. So we should, I'll say, I'm in favor of us discussing with the superintendent and then the superintendent directing um, the department heads to put it on the agenda because he is good with sharing with us what it is that's going to appear on the agenda because if something's not supposed to appear on the agenda, it shouldn't be there. So I, I'm just, I, like I said, I hear what you're saying, but that is causing confusion, um, not just amongst us, but also with the public because things are being said when they really don't need to be. Like, it, I mean, if, if it just, it makes it easier to do it that way. It, we oh. know exactly what's going to, we know what it is that we're going to discuss. The, so, yeah, we, we know where we're, what direction to go and if it's done that way. He, you know, Dr. Castagna has kept us updated on what's going to appear on the agenda. It gets to be too confusing when we have, especially if we have multiple board members just adding things to it. It just, no. it's not helpful. Well, with all due respect, the it is in preparation for committee week stuff goes on to the committee agendas through the committee chair and as a courtesy dr castaga can be copied on it or say hey you know i talked to so and so this is going to be on here to be discussed and then the friday before the agenda setting meeting dr castag department heads um president vice president they look at the agenda and at that point in time, the superintendent is, he's uh, going down the agenda and saying, this is what we're gonna, this is what, and so you get the input at the beginning, then you have that review there, and then that goes out to the uh, public on the website. If something comes up after that, it goes to the uh, superintendent to say, hey, what, what are we gonna do about this? Uh, Dr. Castagna was concerned about uh, allowing enough time for VEX. So we added that without going through uh, the committee to begin with. So at that point in time going forward, you have that, uh, the superintendent saying, hey, this is what we're gonna do, this is why we're doing it. But my point is at the beginning of this a month, of each month is how you get stuff added to the agenda. And then going forward, the superintendent would uh, after the agenda is reviewed that Friday morning. Can I ask a question? Yeah. And Mr. maybe Mr. Rakunas can uh, guide us on this. Is there school code dictating to the way that committees are supposed to work? No, so generally it's dictated by the board president. So the board president, I think you, you Willen Hills does have a policy. Right. You have a board policy that tells you what your standing committees are. Right. But I think I don't, when I reviewed that, I don't think it says exactly like when you're supposed to meet no. exactly. So that would all be dictated. Sure. By the and we, we, we do figure out the dates for that. I'm just, I'm now getting confused because since I was elected in 2019, the way that committees ran were they were the working groups for the board. Yep. And the superintendent was there, but he was not the, the facilitator for them. They were basically for each individual board member serves as a chair of a committee. And then we also serve as members of other committees. Mm -hmm. And each of us as the chair of the committee that we chair is responsible for communicating with any necessary stakeholders that may include the superintendent but do not necessarily need to what items are going to be discussed as long as they are things that can legally be discussed publicly not personnel matters and not you know legal uh, pending legal issues now that that's how we've done it and that, I, I was under the same understanding that's that, that was because that's how our policy was written it's, and it's, that no one has veto power of what goes on or off besides our solicitor because of legal reasons Correct. And what okay. you described right there. Is that now, not what is happening? No, that's what I, I was just reviewing for the public how that process works. And uh, Miss Reed had a question about I did I clarify the question for mm -hmm. you? Okay. 
Okay. So I, was getting I think more we're, all, confused we're all clear now. Clarified. So thank you. We're for, all clear now. Thank you. Okay, I, I think, I think the, con I, I, well, first of all, VEX did go committee because we had a presentation. Oh, that's right, it did. Yeah, we had a presentation yeah, my fault. the board. Um, and I think that's a perfect example of something that should go public. It's a new initiative so the public can see it, things like that. I think the confusion comes that the, if, if it's a working committee of the board and you invite the public into a first reading of a working proposal, it's hard because, especially buildings and grounds, because these are big ticket items, right? So the first time the board's hearing it, I'm hearing it, is along with the public. And then you mention things like, well, maybe we'll remodel the intermediate building, we're going to move the kids out of there. And so the seed of the public starts going, oh, wait, they're going to do that. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I never really worked in a district that functioned with committees that way, which this is the board. I hope we can all just deliberate here and not nobody take hard feelings. But it's, it's hard because it seems like it goes public first, and then we talk about it, and then we decide if we're going to do it. But we're sending out things publicly that we legally, we can't do. Like there was, there was issues that showed up where Angel and I were like, no, no, we can't, don't say that because we can't do that and so on. So I think, I think there should be some buffer before that step, that's all. Um, and I, I think that's maybe a little bit what Ms. Reed's talking about. And also we get to the point where one board member calls Angel and says, I want this on. And another board member calls Ms. Boyd and says, I don't want that on. Then what direction does Ms. Boyd take? Which, which person a carries more, more weight? You know what I'm saying? And so the same thing like, you know, there's sometimes I'll talk to our directors and I'll say, well, where did this come from? Well, the board member called me. Well, do you support that? Like, I think at least they should have that conversation with the director and say, and if they don't support it, then let's talk about it maybe as a group Sorry. on the things we can. That's all. I just think sometimes we're putting the cart before the horse and putting things out publicly that we can't do or won't do. That's all. Well, in the example of Ms. Boyd, um, that's personnel. So uh, the board president is in charge of personnel. So if there's a board member directing her to do something, she come to the board president and then I could consult you or uh, if it's something could be on the committee agenda for the, uh, the Tuesday, Wednesday committee night, then you could add it there if it's appropriate. So that's the way that part so of it should if work. Mr. Wilson has curriculum. Mm -hmm. Who Tells who can tell him what to put on his That's agenda. That's me, and we actually have a form, a Google form, for any of the other departments yeah. who want to add something to our curriculum agenda. And then Mr. Wilson and I work together to determine if that is something worthy of adding to the agenda based on how time sensitive it is, how serious it is, and if it is something that is actionable within the next board meeting yeah. or the, the following month, so within a few months. And, I'm not, and I'm we're using, happy to share that with other committees if they would like to implement a similar process. If another board member wants something on there, they go through you? If they're on my committee, uh, they, we should be talking to each other more than we are doing now. If they're also on curriculum, or if they're on one of the other committees, then yes, they would come to me as the chair mm -hmm. of curriculum. Okay. Yeah. And we've, uh, historically, uh, Dr. Cassandra, it's, it's actually worked uh, pretty well. We've been doing it for a number of years now. To your point on a buffer, fair point. Um, if there's something that's going to be unwieldy for a committee and you flag it, you see it, you know, bring it up. Say, Marilyn, this is something we can't, um, you know, it's going to be too much for the initial meeting, whatever it might be, or uh, Mr. Finney's group. So I just don't think the board deliberates at committees, again, because you, you have the public, where no one's going to be as open and honest in deliberation with the public at that thing. I think that's why you have the agenda meeting. I think some of the you know, when I hear public saying, well, we don't really know what you're doing or this person's doing because we have so many small meetings. We have a parent advisory council, then we have a committee meeting on these nights. And there's like five people online one night, and there's eight people online one night, and there's 20 people on. So it's like we're not giving one message out there. We're giving every little chunk group a message, you know? Well, so that's all. That's, and again, I'm, I'm only talking because it's my opinion. You guys, yeah. the board can do it any way they want to do it. I just, this is what I'm experiencing. This is the feedback I'm getting internally that I just want to share, that's all. Can I just ask yeah, sure. your experience with board committees? Is that not a normal, I mean, this is, this is the only district I know of how things run, honestly. I haven't looked at other. Um, the, the board the committees met as committees needed to meet. So if there were, mm. like the budget time, finance committees meeting, right? Okay. More so consistent. it's not like a monthly consistent. Yeah. If, if there was nothing going on buildings and grounds that needed to you know, deliberate with the board or have a committee, they wouldn't have a committee meeting. They only had committee meetings as they needed them. You know, and they would set them, they would set them seasonally, I guess you could say, right? At the beginning of the year, curriculum stuff. Now again, 
there's always and I, curriculum's a bad example because it's always there's always stuff going on there. <laughs> always have but typically anything that you were going to talk about the committee, unless it was a heavy, I like the vex. That's a big initiative, K to 12. It's a, it's a, we're spending some money on it. Mm -hmm. So we want to go to the public. We want to talk about because we want buy-in from the community. We want buy-in from That's the staff. That's my next course. question. Like, yeah, how well, do you get that community that, exactly. discussion if you don't have like regular? So you wait to, for the community to say, "I want to weigh in on something." Or well, no, I think something like that. But it's like something. Okay, hey, we we vetted this. We think it's a good thing. We want to move forward. Let's take it public and see what the public says. Do we have the public support? Let's talk about the impact then. Then you bring it to the agenda meeting, you talk about it again, you have input, and then you can vote. So you have three times to take it there. But those are like the big ticket items. I feel like sometimes we're sitting here and we're all like looking at each other like, like oh, we, gotta, we need something on your agenda because you have to put something on. You know what I'm saying? That's all. Well, yeah, you don't have to, but um, I, and I appreciate you, you want to get stuff done, and you know, we all do, but that's... My biggest flaw is I go too fast. I, I'm yeah. wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've always thought of committee, you know, as that informal way for the Sharing community ideas. to share, yeah, to, to share with us, you yeah. know, because then we can answer. Because when they have community or um, public, comment. public comment, we're not supposed to respond. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my understanding. That's I don't, correct. We're not supposed to respond back to them. But, um, mm. and I guess my point of a few committees ago, um, when we didn't have um, at the time like security representation and and there was something that I thought we were going to discuss you know it ended up not being on the agenda I was confused um, you know nobody was there to discuss it you know because it's also a chance to bring up mm -hmm. whatever that, that that pertains to that committee and, and I was ready to do that but there was nobody to discuss it with so um, that was also my well, thing. Well, if it's your committee, you could obviously bring it up. It's not. Right? It's oh, not. Okay. Well, then I guess I you have to think. find whose committee it is. I'm then, not sure right? whose committee yeah. I'm on. Correct. Yeah, I'm not sure whose that is. Okay. Uh, thank you for those uh, thoughts. Yeah. Anything else on that? No, thank okay. you. Okay. And the second item tonight is uh, I'm going to step down as president of the school board, um, not off the board, just as president. And um, it can uh, work two ways. Um, if there is interest in uh, nominating and voting on somebody tonight, we can do that. I will stay uh, as president uh, through Monday. Uh, we can um, go ahead and uh, advertise um, that there will be a meeting to uh, uh, vote on a new president. So um, is there any interest in uh, voting tonight? Any ideas? No. Okay. So we'll do that. I'll uh, stay in place until uh, Monday. And uh, so when we have that special meeting, we'll send out a notice and... Um, the special meeting's Monday? Yeah. I, it, or, uh, not Monday. Yeah, you'll have to advertise. And that's tomorrow. We'll... Uh, let's... It's technically a reorganization. you have to re advertise a reorganization? If you're going to take action, uh, yeah, I think you should do it at a special meeting. Yeah. <clears throat> Agreed. Uh, so I'll... I'll, I'll uh, I'll rephrase. I'll stay in, until Tuesday. I just recalled I have a commitment yeah, you, on Monday. Yeah, you do. My. Uh, that's not a reading of the year. Okay. That's, that's advertised. Uh, <coughs> you want to have the okay. meeting on Tuesday? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, time? Uh, but we'll say 5 o'clock. It'll, it'll have to go on Sunday. <coughs> yeah, that's cool. Excuse me. Yeah. And uh, other than that, um, is there any uh, anything else on our new business? Okay. Well, we we still got to complete the meeting with public comment, Mr. Wilson, so we can allow that. We did not give committee reports last week, so we should do those tonight. <laughs> Excuse me. Sir, is there anybody there, Mr. Wilson? Yes, we have uh, Mr. or Mrs. Reed. Okay, if you could give your name, address, and please hold your remarks to two minutes. Hi, can you hear me? No. We can't hear you. Hello? Very quiet, Ms. Reed. What about now? 
We can hear you online, but I guess they can't hear you inside. Um, Jessica. Okay, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't sound like I can do anything about that then. <laughs> we, can, we can hear you, Ms. Reed. Yes, okay. you're good to go. Okay, so when you were talking about the agendas, um, I understand what Ms. Reed is saying whenever she's, and I feel like what she's talking about is the um, agenda setting and legislative agendas that are public, and, and maybe I'm misunderstanding, that are public before the meetings actually happen. Um, but I think, um, Mr. Belmont was talking about the agendas for committee meetings, and I've been confused uh, for approximately six months now since this new board has um, come about because um, I don't believe that the agendas for committee meetings are posted ahead of time. So the only thing that the public has to go on is the, the um, committee heads that are listed. And so it always, in my experience, if, um, for example, facilities was listed, that was the chance for the public to go hear about facilities or bring something up. I don't, I don't need to go to my board member for a facilities question, but what I do sometimes like to do is speak to all of the people, all of the decision makers at the same time, which is why committee meetings have always been so beneficial, so that you don't you're not having one conversation with a board member, one conversation with the facilities director, one conversation with the superintendent or whoever else. You have them all in the room. You can ask a question, they can respond, et cetera. What has happened very frequently is that half of the people, half of the, the items on the listed for that committee meeting don't even get addressed or the committee person isn't even there. And so I came hoping to talk about something specific and oh, they weren't on this agenda that I didn't even see because I can't see it. And the meeting's over in 45 minutes even though it was scheduled for two hours. Um, I don't need a two hour meeting, but if I come like wanting to talk about something that that's literally my chance because I, I, can't, I can't bring it up at the other meetings. I can't, it has to either pertain to something that's on the agenda or you guys can't respond to it. So committee meetings are important for that reason and a lot of what you're talking about Ms. feels Reed? very off for the sunshine act quite frankly so uh yes go ahead are my two minutes up okay you've met your uh two minute limit uh thank okay. you for your comments and uh we'll make sure the agendas are on the website for the committees okay um we went out of order now we can move on to committee reports and uh we can review those What came up first. Uh, I pulled up superintendent committee. Would you like to do that one? I don't even know, does it show where we're at here? Yeah, down at the bottom, it's, you'll see committee reports. Click on it. Oh, right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you just have three items. <laughs> Third. The third one was curriculum. That was uh, Mr. Wilson. So the first one was just a PSBA proposed change to our student discipline policy that we adopted. The second were the motions on the agenda tonight to approve through Carlo University. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Curriculum. Uh, so for curriculum, we had a presentation from Aaron Wall at the high school on their 12 deep group. Okay, want to elaborate on that at all? Or? Uh, yeah, it's an amazing uh, organization that I think I was on the board when we voted that into existence just a couple of years ago. And it's doing a lot to sort of boost student morale and really connect groups of scholars together who wouldn't otherwise necessarily be in the same social circles. Mm -hmm. um, and they're doing a lot of positive things in the community as well. Sounds like it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, also on technology, um, we have new design badges to identify ourselves in and out of buildings. And then uh, YouTube live streaming, uh, we're trying to identify the way folks are uh, watching our movies. So moving on to the other committees. Um, business, we had the budget announcement, the athletics. Uh, Ms. Lawson, do you want me to read that for you? 
No, we have roster and GPA updates. You can see the attached middle school. We discuss middle school football as well as community eligibility initiatives. Um, I'll just take facilities. Um, unless, oh no, Mr. Flanagan, you can take facilities. Mr. Flanagan, facilities. He doesn't have it open. He doesn't? No. Would you like me to take that for you? What's that? Would you like me to take that for you? Yeah, I did not. Uh... No, we'll take it back. I'll take it back. We have site logic, high school project. We discussed the high school projects with Wilkins, DOAs, the library, and high school engraver. Um, we discussed pool starter block up this pool starter block update, DAI group, Trimco. We discussed the Woodland Hills track public use and had some discussion in regards to it. Pre-construction meeting for the high school paving at the Wolver and the Wolverine Stadium were discussed in facilities. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Lawson. And uh, transportation, Ms. Creech. Uh, yes, I don't have that pulled up. Can you do that for me? Sure. Um, we had one item on that agenda, and it was uh, bus stop safety concerns, making sure kids are uh, crossing the street without being distracted was the gist of uh, that conversation. Okay, that concludes uh, committee reports. Moving us to the end of the meeting, we'd like to thank Mr. Ditka for making the trip to be here in case we need your expertise. Appreciate that. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Ms. Scott. Second? Second. Second. Meeting adjourned. Good night. Good night. Get it again, Mr. Decker. Huh?